this is the kind of thing that uh, goes under the radar and then winds up having a tremendous impact. Because in, in essence, what he's doing is he's gutting every federal agency there is and taking them outside the control of the scientists, you know, the, the career officers the career. that have studied their whole lives to do this. Civil servants who aren't political who do the nation's business and scientists and, and experts and scholars, people sort of who are there to, to run federal agencies to do the nuts and bolts daily stuff, and they've decided, no, no, let's get somebody like Mike Brown in there. And what they're doing is these guys all serve under Democratic and Republican presidents. They've been through all the administrations, et cetera, et cetera. And what they're doing is putting a guy in charge of all of these agencies who is a political appointee. And the political appointee, not only just the political appointee, but then they have to also report back to the White House. Everything gets clear. But not only are they adding a, a layer of politics to this, and of course partisanship to anything that comes out of these agencies that did not previously exist, but they're also adding a layer of bureaucracy. And by the way, that's also on purpose. It's not because they like bigger government, although apparently they do. Yeah. It's because they want to slow down the process. They want to make sure that there's less environmental regulation, work in safe and healthy regulations. Part of this is to help their political contributors. There's no answer or buts about it. The New York Times story mentions it. And, of course, the, small, the business groups, small business and definitely big business, they're all ecstatic about this new rule. Consumer groups who represent you uh, are, of course, uh, angry and outraged. And just don't think about it as, oh, OSHA. I don't know what OSHA is. I, okay, fine, it's an agency. Oh, Occupational Safe and Healthy Administration. I guess so. It's another one of the alpha vote <laughs> soup things. You know what they do? They protect you at work. So now... You might say, oh, well, big deal, so I don't get carpal tunnel syndrome, or if I do, I, you know, they're not going to have just as good a legislation, or whatever it is, I don't care that much. Well, that might be true if you work in an office. Might or might not be true. But if you work in a coal mine, believe me, you should be really worried. If you work in a... Why do you think, all the, why do you think the mining accidents have gone up dramatically, twofold, threefold, fourfold, under the Bush administration? Because they don't regulate safety. Well, that, that the company in the, the mining company there in West Virginia was fined like thirty-five times, though. I mean, they, you know, the, the, the regulations were this thirty-five. Close, I think they were fined close to seven hundred dollars. Ooh, seven hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's going to that's gonna make you stand up and think that maybe you better do a better job. That of they took out of our taxes. <laughs> that's right. Uh, you know, of course, the people that uh, were. Janet Jackson's nipple was fined three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Right, so three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for showing Janet Jackson's nipple. Seven hundred dollars if you happen to accidentally kill a mine worker the, uh, because you didn't do what you were supposed to do to protect their health and safety. Says this executive order allows the political staff at the White House to dictate decisions on health and safety issues, even if the government's own impartial experts disagree. And that's the really key thing. He, but Hank Waxman says it's a terrible way to govern. Um, and. Uh, that's exactly what's happening here is that even when the government has civil servants or scientists to go oh no this is you can't do it this way now there'll be a guy there like Mike Brown ready to overrule those experts and here's a devastating third part of this that that is not getting enough coverage again it's the first day of the story <laughs> Sorry. Just came out today. all right but I should that I want to point out because it's in the 88th paragraph of the story the White House told agencies that in writing guidance documents they could not impose new legal obligations on anyone and could not use mandatory language such as shall, must, required, or requirement. You know what that means? That means all the laws just became voluntary. And how many corporations do you know that are going to follow voluntary laws if they don't have to? Yeah. This is insanity, man. They're just selling away the government. You can, somebody make them stop.